There's been some concern about Wi-Fi, whether or not it could have a negative impact on our health, but researchers are actually telling us it's okay. So James, let's just start off with um, why do people think from the beginning that it, it could be unsafe for us? A lot of the concern about Wi-Fi signals are not to mince words, but it's from the same sort of you know anti-vaccination groups that you see banding about a lot of you know cherry-picked results and kind of pseudoscience to say that this isn't safe. The fact of it is, is your average Wi-Fi access point, and that's you know a home router or something mounted to the ceiling, a, just an access point that you'd have in a corporate deployment. Those really only output between 200, 250 milliwatts, or maybe 400 at the high end. And that's just not enough energy mm -hmm. to really do much other than send, you know, radio signals. And the thing is, is that's well below, it's like one one thousandth, the amount that would be considered dangerous. And so there's really no actual risk here. And mm -hmm. there's been loads of studies into different types of you know, RF signals and how they affect the body, but there haven't been a lot up to this point about how Wi-Fi specifically mm -hmm. affects the body. And there's really no magical property of Wi-Fi that would be any different from any other type of RF signal. And researchers found that Wi-Fi signals are actually only about 4% of the total RF signal that you're exposed to day to day. So if you think about the cell phone towers that you know, send a signal to your phone mm -hmm. are a little over half the RF interference or you know, RF signals that you're exposed to day to day. Broadcast TV and radio is a little over a quarter, but Wi-Fi is only 4%, and it's really low power. And yeah, you might think it's only 4%, but it's a lot closer to you than a cell phone right. tower or a TV broadcast tower would be. Mm -hmm. But because it's so low power, it's still really not that big of a deal. And keep in mind that, yeah, the device that you're using, like a laptop or a smartphone, is in your hand or on a desk mm -hmm. near you, but for a, for a Wi-Fi network, it's communicating with a router that's going to be, you know, kind of far away from where you are. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'd just be wired into a system, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So there's really not a huge risk here of uh, any negative health effects from exposure to Wi-Fi but people keep saying that there are. Okay, and, and, and so James, uh, this recent study that, that you were talking about, um, explain on that a little bit. This was inside classrooms where they actually did this. Well, there's one thing that was inside classrooms, mm -hmm. but this was kind of a meta-analysis of a bunch of different recent studies of Wi-Fi and RF signals broadly and how they affect you know, the body. Mm -hmm. And with the part that was in classrooms, it's, you know, only 4% of it is really from Wi-Fi, and even then, it's not harmful. For the larger, sort of broader scope of this, it's, you know, yes, we do live in a society that has Wi-Fi now, mm -hmm. and there are people who want to say things like, mm -hmm. radiation is really, really scary, but radiation is really just energy traveling through space. So if you turn on a flashlight, that's radiation, mm -hmm. because that's energy traveling through space. So with this, there's really not a great level of concern. And more than focusing on the Wi-Fi itself, focus on how you're using it. You know, maybe reduce your screen time on cell phones. Maybe that's giving you the, the negative uh, health outcomes mm -hmm. that people are reporting from Wi-Fi exposure. We could probably all use a little Little less decrease, screen time. Yeah. yeah, in our screen time, that's for sure. Uh, make sure you stick with Tech Republic for more on James' story.